Welcome into New York Giants now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. Give me a follow over on Twitter. The handle's right there, at Marshall Green underscore. With the offseason here, another way you can stay up to date with Giants news and Twitter uh, news and rumors is by giving me a follow over on Twitter, at Marshall Green underscore. And I'm following back everybody that follows me until we get to 3,000 followers. Today's show, I wanted to take a look at some NFL free agent targets for Big Blue at the biggest positions of need. We'll talk about those in a second. Let's kind of set the scene of free agency. The Giants enter free agency with about $47.5 million in cap space. That does take into effect what it would cost to sign the rookies out of the 2023 NFL draft. So that kind of takes advantage of that. The Giants also could save another $6.7 million by cutting Kenny Galladay, so that gets you up to almost $54 million per year. Also, uh, $54, in, $54 million in free agency, excuse me. And NFL free agency opens up on March 13th, which is just around the corner, less than a month of a uh, month away. I do think it is important to look at offensive and defensive free agents the Giants have on this roster right now. We know Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, Matt Breida, Richie James, Marcus Johnson, as well as Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, John Feliciano, and Nick Gates are all going to be free agents on the Giants from the offensive side of the ball. They also have 10 defensive free agents that all played pretty meaningful snaps for Big Blue, starting with Justin Ellis, Jihad Ward, Nick Williams, O'Shane Zimenez, Jalen Smith, Landon Collins, Gerard Davis, Fabian Moreau, Tony Jefferson, Julian Love. So you got nine players on offense and 10 players on defense that enter as free agency. And you also have two spots to fill on special teams. Jamie Gillen, your punter, is a free agent, as well as Casey Kreider, the long snapper. I would expect the Giants to re-sign Casey Kreider as their long snapper. Jamie Gillen, I think there will at least be some competition for that spot. In my opinion, the four biggest needs for Big Blue going into a free agency center around wide receiver, the interior offensive line, off-ball linebacker, and cornerback too. So I think those are the positions of need for Big Blue going into free agency where they're going to have a little over $50 million to go out and sign and improve this roster. It's going to be interesting, and I'll tell you this much. Nobody and no other channel on YouTube is going to cover Giants free agency better than we are. Every single signing is going to be a video, multiple videos every single day through the NFL offseason and especially NFL free agency. We're going to go live probably a couple of times when the Giants make some moves. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Go down right now. Hit that big red button, youtube.com slash TV, And have your notifications turned on so when the Giants sign a player, you get alerted when we go live or put out a video. With the Giants' biggest need, in my opinion, being the wide receiver position, I wanted to take a look at the top 10 wide receivers entering NFL free agency. Odell Beckham is at the top of the list, but I don't know how much interest the Giants actually have in Beckham considering he didn't play football last year. Juju Smith-Schuster provided to be a, proved to be a reliable target for Kansas City. Jacoby Myers, a solid player, not a wide receiver one in my opinion, but a good wide receiver two. Alan Lazard is solid, but also like Myers, I don't think he's a wide receiver one. Honestly, none of these people on this board, except for maybe a healthy Michael Thomas or OBJ, would be wide receiver one. DJ Chark is interesting because he's such a great deep threat and he could make this offense more explosive. I have a star next to Michael Thomas because he's not officially a free agent yet, but he is expected to be bought, uh, cut. We'll talk about him in a second. I think Miko Hardman could make some sense. Mike Kafka spent time in Kansas City. He knows Hardman on a personal note. Joe Shane talked long and hard about wanting to bring in people that they're familiar with. So I think that makes some sense. Jarvis Landry, if you're looking for a veteran slot guy, but his availability and injury history concerns me. Marvin Jones is a veteran outside receiver. Paris Campbell is someone Thomas, that I actually though, have my eye on. Because the I think he's I think the he biggest name in NFL free agency. Well, I do want to focus the wide receiver on. spot one, once he does get cut. By the New Orleans Saints, a guy that didn't play in 2021, only played in three games in 2022, seven games in 2020, 10 games since 2020. But when he's healthy, he's one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Um, in 2019, he was electric, um, one of the best receivers in the NFL in that season. Some other receivers that I could be looking at 
in the 2022-2023 uh, offseason are these other four wide receivers. Jacoby Myers, Miko Hardman, Paris Campbell, and DJ Chark. Chark didn't play all too much this past year, but he's such a great deep threat, like we said. He could definitely make this more offense more explosive. I like Paris Campbell because of the, his lineup versatility where he can line up wherever on the football field, in the slot or outside. Mikel Hardman, Mikel Hardman, the explosiveness and just the creativity you can have on with him in your offense and the Kafka connection I think makes some sense there. Jacoby Myers is the most true wide receiver of these guys on the list. 67 grabs for 804 yards and six touchdowns. I think the Giants are going to sign someone in free agency. It may not be a top dog. It may not be someone we talked about, but they have to bring in a couple of guys at the wide receiver spot with Darius Slate and Richie James as potential free agents. Maybe the Giants bring them back and then they address the rest of the needs in free agency. I'd like the Giants to go out uh, and just, just go get a couple of playmakers at the wide receiver spot. I got a couple of guys in mind. I showed you 14 of them, but I want to hear from you. Name a wide receiver you want the Giants to sign. Maybe it's Odo Beckham Jr. Maybe it's Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry, Paris Campbell, Jacoby Myers, Alan Lazard, DJ Chark. There's a couple of them. I think those could make some sense. I want to hear from you, though. Sound off in the comments section. A wide receiver you want the Giants to sign. We're going to get to other Giants free agent targets in a second, but first, we got to tell you about our proud sponsor here on the show today, and that is Fume. Go to tryfume.com slash chatsports and use promo code chatsports to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today and create a new positive habit because we all have bad habits and we certainly know how hard they can be to kick those bad habits. Our sponsor Fume is on a mission to accelerate humanity's breakup from the bad habits that consume far too many of us. Fume is a natural diffusive device that uses plants and behavioral science to help you trade out your negative habit for a positive one. I didn't expect much out of Fume when I got it, but the minty sensation is really powerful and, it, and the flavors are awesome. Fume is not a vape. It is a non-electronic device designed to transform your negative habits. The easiest way to stop a bad habit is to switch to a positive one, and Fume is designed to perfectly do just that. Head to tryfume.com slash chatsports and use code chatsports to save 10% off. That's try, F-U-M.com slash chatsports. It's underneath the video right now. It's also in the comments and description of today's show. The Journey Pack comes with three unique flavors, white cranberry, maple pepper, and crisp mint. Shout out to Fume for being a sponsor. From oh, wide receivers to interior offensive line, that link we're going to start at the center spot. These are the show. top five free agents according to Pro Football Focus. These are their ranks at the bottom across the NFL. Ethan Posick was the number third ranked center in, in, in the NFL last year. He's going to be a free agent. Connor McGovern is also going to be a free agent. He's a good interior offensive lineman. Garrett Bradbury is a guy that I liked. I think he's a good run blocker. Kind of got tore up against the Giants in the playoffs, but he's solid. He was the ranked 11th um, interior center in the NFL. Bradley Bozeman, another guy that's an interesting player. We've talked about him on the channel before. He was linked to the Giants in the past. He's a nasty run blocker. I think he could set the edge. And I also like Jake Brendel out of the San Francisco 49ers. He is a road grader. He's a guy that's the 20th ranked pro football focus center. And I just think that's a spot the Giants have to get better at. They're good at the interior offensive line at the guard spot with Marcus McKeithen and the other guy and the other young guys they took in the draft last year. Joshua Azudu, Marcus McKeithen, both out of North Carolina. I think they're good at the interior offensive line spot. As from a depth perspective, if you're going to go and draft, select a guard, I hope that it's Isaac Sayamalu of the Philadelphia Eagles. I believe he is the best guard in free agencies. He was ranked 10th this past year in the NFL by Pro Football Focus. I think it's pretty funny. Will Hernandez had somewhat of a back, uh, bounce back year for Arizona. Evan Brown is an interesting name as well from Detroit, as well as Ben Powers and Dalton Reisner. If I'm going to spend big money on the offensive line, it would be on Isaac Sayamalu. I think he's just a difference maker, and he could be a road paver for this offensive line. The Giants need to get a little bit more tough and nasty at that interior offensive line spot. I think Mark Lewinsky is going to be back at your right guard for sure, so you could look for a Ben Bredesen replacement. Like I said, you got Joshua Azudu and Marcus McKeithen, the two rookies out of North Carolina. So I think you're good from a depth perspective there, and I liked what I saw from Azudu, but I think Sam Malu could really set this pack 
this off, uh, offensive line apart from the pack. I want to ask you this question before we get to more positions and more free agent targets. What is the bigger need for the Giants this offseason? Is it offensive line? Is it wide receiver? Let me know what you think. I think you, you, you have more of a need at wide receiver, but you need to improve your offensive line, especially the interior offensive line, just as much. I think it's a toss-up, so I want to let the real ones decide. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Another big need for Big Blue is the in off-ball interior linebackers, and these are the top five available in free agency. Levante David, the all-pro, the veteran out of Tampa Bay. His age is a little bit concerning for me, but if you're looking for an, an instant playmaker at that spot, could be David uh, Levante David. David Long is another intriguing name for me. Somewhat of a smaller inside linebacker, but the speed is what separates him apart from the other guys. He's a true sideline to sideline tackling guy. Can sometimes get lost in the shuffle due to being only 5'11", 220 pounds, but he's got just range and speed on that side of the ball. TJ Edwards, he's just a great linebacker overall. That's why the Philadelphia Eagles were so good on defense. Tremaine Edmonds is the guy that intrigues me the much the most, and Jermaine Pratt is another guy that I'm interested in. These are these, their stats from the seasons. If I had to choose one of these guys to sign, it would just be Tremaine Edmonds because I like the connection that he has to Buffalo. Joe Shane knows him personally, but he's going to be the most expensive out of all of them. I think Levante David will make a lot of money. I like the versatility of Pratt as well. Uh, he's a good run defender and pass coverage guy. And TJ Edwards, he's just a menace. He's someone that's a really good sideline sideline linebacker. He can scrape and get downhill with the best of them. David Long's another linebacker that I like a lot as well. 86 tackles, seven tackles for loss, five pass breakups, two interceptions. He really emerged the scene last year. Uh, I'd roll with either David Long or Tremaine Edmonds as my inside linebacker spot if I'm looking to break the bank there. Not sure if the Giants will, but definitely a position of need. We also know the Giants need to improve their cornerbacks as well. Adoree Jackson will be back as their number one corner, but you need a number two corner. You can't rely on Fabian Morrow and Nick McLeod and those guys anymore. We saw against the Eagles what that did. You got Jamel Dean. I think he's the best in free agency. I don't think James Bradbury would come back to Big Blue. Kind of a nasty breakup for those two. Cam Sutton is an interesting piece for me. Patrick Peterson, I think he's a little bit old, not a fan. I wouldn't go after him. Jonathan Jones intrigues me, but I'm also worried, always worried, about signing someone off the New England Patriots defense. I put Chauncey Gardner-Johnson on here. I know he's not an outside corner, but I do believe he's someone that the Giants could be interested to kind of play that nickel spot, be that other strong safety, kind of play in the box, be in the nickel, great tackler, bring some physicality to this defense. I think Marcus Peters makes some sense as well due to his connection with Wink Martindale back at the Baltimore Ravens. I think Emmanuel Mosley, who got hurt earlier this year, is a really good corner. Worried about his injury history. Rocky Sin and Isaiah Oliver are two other names that I think could definitely make the Giants better if they're not looking to break the bank and go kind of tier two at that cornerback spot. Linebacker and cornerback, though. Those, in my opinion, are the two biggest needs on this defense right now. You just need more talent at this position. I would say cornerback is a bigger need, in my opinion. Um... That's just my take. I want to hear from you, though. Bigger need. Linebacker, cornerback, sound off in the comment section. I also think that the tight end could be a spot that the Giants go and look at free agency. This is the last position we'll focus on in today's show. Dalton Schultz, the number one tight end. I think he's going to be too expensive for Big Blue. Evan Ingram, not sure that a reunion makes that much sense. Uh, he kind of soured on the fans. And I think he found a home in Jacksonville with um, Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence. Mike Secchi is an interesting name. We'll talk about him. Hayden Hurst and Austin Hooper round out that list. But of these five guys, Mike Gusecki makes the most sense to me. Didn't really play all that much or all that well, to be honest, in 2022. But if you look at what he did in the prior four seasons, especially in 2021, where he had 73 grabs for 780 yards and two touchdowns, six touchdowns the year before that, five touchdowns the year before that, he's an athletic tight end. He blew the combine out of the water because of his testing numbers and what he's able to do on that side of the ball. Uh, and I also think it's pretty unique and funny that he grew up a fan of the New York football Giants. This is what Gusecki had to say a couple of weeks ago uh, to the media about Big Blue. He said, I was running around my house 
losing my mind, especially because Plaxico was my favorite player. My reaction looked very similar to how I react when I score a touchdown now. LOL, that was him on Super Bowl 42. I doubt he was doing that nasty gritty that he did back in 2007. But I want to ask you this question, because I do think Mike Gusecki could make some sense as that receiving tight end for Big Blue. Play that same position that Travis Kelsey played in the Mike Kafka, Eric Bieniemy, Andy Reid offense in Kansas City. He's not the player that Travis Kelsey is, obviously, but he's athletic and he's a great tight end. I think he'd make some sense. And I don't think you'd have to pay too much for a guy like Mike Gusecki, who really had a down year, which I think kind of crashed his, uh, his value. But what do you think? Should the Giants sign him? Type S for sign. Type P for pass. Make sure you guys hit me up over on Twitter at Marshall Green underscore. I appreciate everybody tuning in. I love doing segments like these and just talking ball and seeing what's out there for the Giants in free agency where they're going to have plenty of money to spend. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up icon and give me a follow on Twitter at Marshall Green underscore.